so I'm just out in the field right now where Ken's cutting some hay and uh, we're, we're viewing a uh, unique creature in action who's filming a YouTube video right now. Let's take an in-depth look as to how this process works. And we gotta be really quiet because we don't want to scare the creature as he's filming the video. And, uh, and uh, oh, and he so saw us. If we stand very well. still, he might not right see away. that we were really moving. Important. So you can see in the background here, we're cutting and we're tedding pretty much at the same time. We do this quite often where either the tedder's in the field or the tedder is pulling in the field just as the mowers are pulling out. It really does depend on how big the field is, whether or not the tedder ends up being in the field at the same time or not, and how many acres we're doing that day. This field that we're in right now is right around uh, 90 to 100 acres. And uh, quite often we have to run the tedder and the mowers at the same time. And we'll probably run two rakes in this field when we rake the hay up later in this week as well. Um, we, te we tend to ted the hay um, right after the mowers are done cutting it. That way we, we spread the hay out as fast as we possibly can, get it uh, the, the fastest dry time. We found that with tedding in this technique where we ted right after the mowers and then ted again usually a day or two afterwards is, is the best way in order to save anywhere from a day to two days of dry down time depending on what the weather is. So you can see them going by me right now. They're operating in tan tandem. Just an awesome sight to see in my opinion. Big equipment doing a big job. Just cool stuff. behind me here we got the tedder and the mower coming at us at the same time and uh, this uh, this allows the hay I think to get to get dried down pretty much right away the the mowers that we use the class 1100s have a, a rubber roller conditioner on it with uh, with a crimper and we're um, okay and uh, and so you get that crimping action on the hay as well but getting her spread out right away I think is really important this is second cut hay, it's not bad crop of hay. And tomorrow what's gonna happen is, is we're probably gonna come back here first thing in the morning again, and we're going to probably tend this a second time in order to get all this stuff that had a bit of drying stuff on it out right now. And, uh, and it'll flip all that green stuff that's on the bottom over and uh, give that stuff a chance to dry because it's Wednesday now and we wanna be able to bail this on Saturday. If the humidity stays out, we should be able to. So what does the field look like after it's tetted? 
Well, it's pretty simple. Um, it lays it out pretty flat. Um, the Pottinger header that we use actually has a, a left and a right tine. So the tines kind of look like this. There's one shorter and one longer. So then when it, it, it teds it out, it actually leaves uh, kind of like little teepees all over the field, which allows the, the air to get underneath that and dry down the hay a little bit faster. So as you can see right in front of me, this is how the mowers lay out the hay. And this is typical. We call this a, a wind row or I call it a cut row. And uh, my mowers being, being a, a larger mower, you can see it lays it out quite wide actually. Um, and, and there's a lot of people out there and that's fine, everybody does their own thing, that this is how they dry their hay. They lay it out in the cut row, they let it sit, uh, it dries, they rake it over, the day they rake it over. Some guys go out there and they rake it over four or five times. Um, but this is alfalfa, this is second cut alfalfa. You can see on the alfalfa here, there's leaves. And these leaves is where all the protein is. So the more you touch this hay, the less leaves there are. The less leaves there are, the less quality there is. So you can see in these cut rows that are over here, these ones haven't been tutted out yet. And then we transition over here from this cut row over this tetted part of the field. And in this tetted part of the field, it's hard to see on the camera, but you can actually see like right here, there's little teepees that go down the field. And those teepees that go down the field, it gets underneath that. But beyond that, you can see on all this tetted stuff, and you can see the tether in the background here, it just lays this stuff out just as flat as flat can be other than these teepees but it spreads it out it spreads it out nice and wide and as it spreads it out that's a lot more surface area for the sun to get over to dry that hay out the wind it's a nice breezy day out today so that wind that sun that's going to dry this hay down it's going to start drying this hay down right away and as it starts drying this hay down right away um, tomorrow, like I said, we'll come in, we'll ted this a second time, we'll do it early in the morning while there's still some dew on it, because that'll help to protect those leaves. That'll help protect those leaves from falling off these plants if we ted it out again when there's a bit of moisture on this stuff. And then that'll take all this stuff that's on the bottom that isn't dry from today, and it'll flip that stuff over. And as it flips that stuff over, then that stuff that's on the bottom, that'll start drying out right away as well. And hopefully this Wednesday today, hopefully we'll be bailing this stuff on Saturday dry because it's going to rain on Sunday again. We're always fighting the rain. We're always fighting the rain. So hopefully we'll be able to bail this stuff dry. If not, we'll put a little bit of hay preservative on it and it'll bail up real nice green. This is a good crop of hay, a real good crop of hay. We like to, when we're making hay, tet our hay uh, right when it's still in the, in the green state, uh, right when we cut it. Uh, the leaves are still firmly attached to the plants. Uh, we like to shake it around. This gives a, an even drying pattern when it's laying in the in the windrow. Uh, you'll get uneven drying where the top will be very crispy and the bottom won't be quite dry yet. Uh, this process uh, was perfected in, in Europe uh, for a long time. Uh, it's taking a little bit to catch on in North America. Uh, but it is definitely the way to go if uh, you're gonna make dry hay here in southern Ontario, at least in this climate. If we were in Texas or California, your whole other story. Uh, but it just works great. You can see how evenly it spreads everything out. It's just for, for making high quality hay, um, it's definitely the way to go. So we'll take a minute and we'll talk about the health of this hay here. Um, after first cut, first cut was really good here. We're, we're, we're southwest of Simcoe, Ontario here. And uh, it's pretty sandy ground. Uh, so all the moisture in the spring was great for first cut. And a uh, very healthy stand of first cut here. Uh, second cut, uh, it, it was dry after it got cut. So it really struggled coming out of the ground. And then it, then it did end up getting a few rains on it. Um, and eventually it started to grow, but it was also maturing. And uh, what, what happens is, uh, like everything, this, this is a business. And when you're selling hay, you need, you need volume. So it becomes a catch-22, whether you cut it or, or you let it try to grow a little bit. So the decision was made to let this one grow for a little bit more and uh, 
and it ended up getting some weevil in it which is why you see some yellowing and browning in the hay now this does reduce the quality a bit of this hay that's in this field but just for everybody viewing that knows a little bit about hay that that, that might see the the yellowing and stuff like that um, I was trying to explain it for people that maybe didn't know uh, it's still gonna make a very good feed product um, but it just might not be up there in your dairy cow quality hay um, it's not gonna have that protein and stuff like that but there, there's still lots of Timothy in there and alfalfa uh, it's gonna make a, a good feed product still and uh, even though the quality is compromised a bit uh, we still treat it the same way as if it's very high quality feed and uh, come out here with, with all the toys, all the bells and whistles, and uh, still try to make an excellent product. There you have it, laying that hay out nice and wide.